So here's a vehicle with the new struts in it. I can't even get it going. It's just too stable. <laughs> that is so much better. It's going to ride so much better too. Ryan's Mobile One. This here is my 1999 Hyundai Elantra. We're going to do a little paint project on this and do a little Bondo work on it. Not that it needs it, but you know, it needs it. We got a little spot here and on the other side. But one of the things this car needs is struts. And uh, buyautoparts.com reached out to me and said, hey, do you need any car parts? I'm like, yeah, I need car parts. And so the rear struts on this used to sound like something that lived under the stairs on the Adams Family movie. It just like creak. But I don't know what it is, but every time I pull cars in here, they just work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> some of it's from what I do, and some of it, I don't know why. It just is what it is. But these struts are shot, and on cars like this, uh, you know, like on a Ford Escort, especially the early 2000s, late 90s, it's a good idea to just replace the whole thing as a unit. So I haven't even looked in the box yet. These guys are usually really dead nuts on when it comes to getting your parts right. Which is, uh, you know, if they say, you want some parts, and like, you got good parts and you get them right, what's, what's not to love about that? So, But these are the quick strut or the ready strut or the one that comes with the spring and the mount already on it. So the reasons why you want to do a quick strut versus another one, and I don't do this with every car, but on something like this, I'm more happy with putting the whole new thing in. Another car that I really like to do a quick strut on is the Ford Escort, just because they're spring break. Uh, Ford Focus is the same story, especially on the rear struts like what we're doing here. So let's take a look and see what we've got. Uh, the finish on it's really nice. So we got a little warning thing at the top. It says refrain from removing nut. Injury or fatality can result. Okay, so that's another reason why it's a good idea to do something like this. Now they're not paying me to say this. They're not telling me exactly what to say. But one of the other nice things is just, it's so much less hassle to do a quick strut. Now some vehicles I really like keeping the factory springs. On something like this, that is not the case. This is the way to go. You got a new mount, uh, you've got a new strut, and you've got a new spring. And the boot on the inside's new as well. So but the big thing, like the warning sticker says, if you pull this off, this nut right here on the end of the strut uh, compressing rod, basically that's holding all this spring pressure. Try to squeeze that with your hand just a little bit. It gives you an idea for the forces you're dealing with. This holds up a car, and if you don't want to mess with having to compress it or the risk, or getting everything aligned just right. You can see how the end of the spring terminates here, and you gotta get that right. Same thing on this. It has to terminate just right there. You gotta line everything up. It's just safer, faster, better, easier. You don't have to have all the special tools if you go this way. In fact, you can use your spare tire jack to jack it up, do one side at a time, and uh, just use the lug nut wrench that comes with this and a basic socket set and a pair of pliers, you know, for dealing with the brake hose retaining stuff. Man, I can't get over how nice the finish is on this. That's a lot of packaging, but the other cool thing is that, dude, it's paper. That's compostable. Way to go, guys. I love when they use stuff like this and not packing peanuts. You've got these strut spring compressors that you can rent from AutoZone. There's Harbor Freight ones that go like this. Those are scary, the other ones are scary. So I've got a big old strut tamer and it makes struts not a big deal, it's a non-issue. This one's not so scary, but yeah, there's risk. If you don't want to mess with it, a quick strut's a good solution. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So if you decide I want to do this with my spare tire jack, minimal tools. Open the trunk, lift the cover, and then you're gonna need your lug nut wrench. So you open up your uh, Yay Sports number one finger thing. Rah, my team's number one. Pull this out. Sometimes your handle is going to be on the underside. So that's always good to know. That's worth watching the video right there. You can click like for that if you want. You loosen it, that collapses the jack, and that frees it to come out. So the first thing you want to do is crack all your lug nuts free. Put it on the left side. Step on it. That makes it turn counterclockwise. If these are all cracked loose like this, you're not going to hurt your back. It's going to be nice and easy. Just because you're using hand tools doesn't mean it has to be hard, right? Clunk. So once those are cracked, you'll find a pinch weld under here. There'll be a couple of little bumps. 
When you look at the jack, there's a little uh, sign that shows where to put it. Just follow the instructions. So this little slit right here sits in the pinch well. You usually have the fat part inboard and the thin part out here because that's where the handle is. It's kind of hard to mess that up unless you're like under the car doing some weird scuba steve action. So if you are in a manual transmission car, put it in first gear or reverse and put a block on each side of the tire on the front tires here and here. Clearly you're not going to use this because you're using it for other things. You just jack your car up. It's no big deal. These are pretty stable, but especially if you're on concrete. If you're not on concrete, make sure you use a real big board or something to where it's not going to like plow into the dirt or the gravel. If you got an old piece of countertop, that works awesome. So this is off the ground. So if you turn it this way so that all the lug nuts are going clockwise and you hold on to them, it makes them come off. You just turn it around like that. Let's get going. Ta -da! That one's off. And if you're really good, if you're like Chuck Morris level, you can just jump right on to the next one. I wouldn't do that if you have a lot of respect for your hubcaps, but if yours are as ugly as these are, I wouldn't worry about it. Alright, let's see. Nope. It's like fishing now. These hubcaps are going to get a fresh spray paint job because, uh, captive by the lug nuts. You can see they've got a little plastic thing on them. The last one. Maybe don't be so rowdy, but like I say, <laughs> it's so cool if I'd have caught that. There we go. So, did I tear the crap out of it? I made some shiny marks on it. <laughs> but it's all good. We're going to paint this anyway. You can see that's all it is. It's got some paint on it. And then if you're doing the jack stand method, I'd strongly recommend just taking it and putting it underneath the car like that. That way if it falls, it doesn't have too far to go. You'll find on a lot of cars, this will fit a 19, 21, whatever. In this case, it doesn't. I need 19 millimeter or three quarter inch. It's going to be a good idea to do a little spraying on this with some penetrating oil. Or even put some transmission fluid on it and then just wire brush it so these will come off easy. When it comes time to put the wheel back on, just go the other direction. Let's get it close. Now you do this star pattern, which is opposites, and then here's the reason why. You see there's no gap right here. You turn it around this way, a huge gap. So if you do it evenly, it tightens on good, but what if you don't do it evenly? Let's just look at that real quick. So this is nice and tight. Looks good. So the problem is now this is over the top of that. So when I tighten this one down, what's going to happen is it'll bind, it'll act like it's kind of sucking down. And sometimes it'll bind, and it depends on the hub in the car, but it'll make it so it's loose. And then this will work loose, and then that'll work loose. And before you know it, your wheel falls off going down the road. Anytime you see that happen, it's because the lug nuts were either not tightened, or a wheel stub broke off, or uh, any combination of things but usually stems from not tightening in the right direction. Hey, while you're in there, be sure to check the pressure on your spare tire. I checked mine just pushing on the side, and these are supposed to be 60 PSI. It'll say on the side of the tire what it's supposed to be. But this thing was flat. Look at this. It's got pretty much nothing in it. That's 100 times better than it was. Yeah, there's nothing worse than getting your spare tire out on the side of the highway. And finding it's flat, that sucks. Now I wanted to show you guys how to do the spare tire jack method for those who are using it and are need to, but man, it's nice to have some good toys and be able to do things this way. I'm going to be doing all, I'm going to paint all the wheels, pressure wash them, I'm going to paint the hub caps, so I want all four wheels off the ground at the same time, plus this makes it a lot easier to film because it gets it higher off the ground where it's easy to work with. And lower it onto the locks. Let's see if this is secure. Do you think this is going to hold secure? That's solid. And it's a lot of fun. It's like a dentist chair ride. But speaking of fun toys and putting things in the description, you'll find these in the description and also this. I've showed you how to do it the other way. Now I've got all four wheels off because like I say, I'm going to paint these. Let me show you what that looks like doing it the fun way. Less scratches. 
just to hubcap automatic supersonic fun kind of stuff. Man, look at all the crap that's on that. I'm just gonna take a steel brush, just hit everything just a little bit. The biggest thing is just hitting these threads. Poor car. That's quieter, that's better. Didn't take much, did it? You all seen this caliper paint? I love it. No, I'm not sponsored by them. I should be though. Not fun. Should just hit right where it is, not do the whole thing just because. This will help prevent it from getting that much worse. Yeah, I didn't sand it. Yeah, it's not primed. Boo hoo. We're talking quick and dirty, high reward, low effort, low hanging fruit kind of stuff. That was fun. Should we do some struts? What do you say? Let's do some struts. Now these are where your alignment is set. On this one, I don't think either of these are cam bolts. To loosen it, you gotta go counterclockwise. In this case, it's like picking up the car, you gotta lift up. And you can do it, but it sucks. If you have a good impact. So the thing is, is do it by hand. Figure out how to do it by hand and then get yourself something like this. It makes such a big difference. It's so much more fun to work on your car if you have something that uh, has a little power to it. It's so hard to go back to hand tools when you've had them. Are you hearing me say that these are worth it? Because that's what I'm saying. Big difference. I'm just going to leave that in there for now. Hit this other one. Hold this still until we figure out if it's a cam bolt. And if it is, we can mark it like it's a clock, you know, 12 o'clock. <laughs> you seen the smoke coming off of that? That's so stinking fun. See how I can turn these and it's not moving. This isn't really threaded either. Okay, back to hand tools. There's a clip back in here, and that clip secures the brake line. There's a pass through here, but we got to get this to come off this way. And then that way, when this folds out, because these aren't holding it anymore, it's like clunk. It doesn't stress your brake hose or bend this line. If you keep everything straight and true, it's not that hard to put back together. Otherwise, it can be. Let's get this pulled off. Another great time to have an impact. This was 17 millimeter, by the way. So if you're lucky, you can grab this with a wrench from the back side, but usually you're going to have to grab it with some vice grips. Needle nose vice grips usually work pretty well for that. There'll be some little something you can grab onto, but it's usually not very thick. Grin and bear it. I pulled it right out of it. If I didn't wire brush that first, I'd be hard pressed to be able to do that. Wire brushing, man, makes all the difference. You can soak and soak and soak and soak in your penetrating oil. But if it's got a bunch of stuff to pile up on, it will. And I normally use channel locks for this, but I've got these handy. So we're going to grab it by that. So the first thing I do, grab it nice and flat. And just wiggle. It gets all that rust dust out of the way. Gosh. That's better. So as I'm wiggling out, I'm just going to sneak in some sideways motion. And out we come. So this secures it to the strut. So guess what? Yes, you have to do this. You can keep this somewhat the same without bending it. That's great. If not, whatever. I don't know if you realize this, but we've got most of the job done. We've got the two bolts out of the bottom. Uh, we painted our drum. Don't really got to do that, but kind of fun. The next thing we need to do is get the bolts on the top. In order to get the bolts on the top, we need to get access to them. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, now if we look at the strut, it goes up in the car this way. So we know the top of the strut's right around here. First obvious thing you do is you look in the trunk for it. And when you see that there's nothing there but just a bunch of metal plate and no access, you go inside. Now that we know we need to go in through the seat, first thing I do is push down the button. 
on the seat it's rotten let's see if there's any access here this has a panel and a bunch of junk in the way and usually it's just behind this part of the seat because we don't have any access through the seat or the trunk we know that it's going to be behind this little uh, shoulder pad so if you look in on this one I already pre-scouted it I know where it's at so there's a bolt right between it's a 12 millimeter I believe pull that out and you can get the seat out you have to push really hard I hate seats like that I mean it's a light colored seat Hyundai I hope you're listening a light colored seat and you gotta put your dirty mechanic tools mechanic stuff all that into there there's no way to get to it without just making the customers car look terrible this is my car I'm really having a hard time getting into this I know that the bolts for this are here and here and then you pull it up some of just pull this seat up if you stick your hand in there you'll find all kinds of gross stuff you don't want your hand in but uh, welcome to Hyundai land so this is where the bolt is for the seat Again, sticking your stuff in there, wipe your extensions off really well. You never know what you've been working on before, an oil pan gasket maybe. Yeah. So with these two bolts out from the seat, you can just pull this up. It's got to pull up sharply. It'll come off, I promise. Let's take it and put it on the roof. I don't know which is more dirty, the seat or the roof. Speaking of the roof. Want to see something fun I bought on Amazon? I'm always buying everything on Amazon. Bought this little guy. You can see the TF card in that. So I get all my uh, Gertie Beats and put them on there. How good does that sound? It's like a little Bose speaker. You pick it up, it doesn't sound as good. You hear the bass? You pick it up, it's tinny. There's nothing. It actually has a little rubber pad that thumps the bass into your table or your roof. Not bad, huh? There's a fun way to do this. Saves your joints, too, so you don't get some kind of tendonitis doing this by hand your whole life. Once you do this, it's for life. You'll love it. Don't want anybody else touching your stuff because you know you'll do a better job. So once you pull this up, you pull out the base shove it up a little bit and then you'll come off at the top and again debate which is more dirty the seat or the roof there's your bolts that's another nice thing to have like a ratcheting one so you don't have to have your hand banging against all the sides Let's get this going, drop it on it and then it's got the power to get it broke free otherwise these little 12 bolts they just don't get it but if you have used them just right they're amazing once you've been spoiled with the pneumatic Mac Tools one, it just dropped out. Once you've been spoiled and had it break everything free for you, I don't know, it's like you just kind of expect it. Expectations. So this whole thing dropped down out of there. Just give it a little wiggle. Probably just buzz them out the rest of the way. That's not threaded, it just, they're like spinning counterclockwise coming out. It's tight fit. You need an alignment when you do this. Yeah, technically you're supposed to. And it's all about this angle here. Okay, so we're free from the top, we're free from the bottom. I'm just gonna shove a wrench because it's close. Pop that out. This is all the struggle that's real. <laughs> I see a lot of other videos that don't show the struggle, but there's a little. So there's something that you need to know, and that is uh, you're adopted. Sorry, didn't mean to tell you in this way, but no. All right, let's see how Buy Auto Parts did in shipping me the right part. Did they do it? You tell me. Sure did. Not awesome. Thanks, guys. They say like giving me struts to put in the video. That's cool. That's awesome. But having them be right is even more important to me because I don't want to have everything torn apart and not be able to put it back together with shipping and everything. So that's my biggest fear when I order online. But I don't worry much for, with them because they're batting 100%. So normally we'd be going to the press, we'd be taking this rusted, nasty uh, strut and 
working with the spring and compressing it and hopefully it doesn't snap on the press or some other dumb thing. We just take the whole thing, put it in. Like seriously, since I've been getting into this, I smell cat food and not in a good way. You ever see a cat food like the canned cat food? It just like smells wrong. There we go. So there's a couple things you can do. You can either lift the whole assembly and line up the bolts, or you can line the top bolts up first and then come back around. That's what we're doing here. So there's three ways to do this. You can eyeball it from underneath. You can stick your finger in the hole and then guide it on. Or you can look down the hole from inside. That's what I usually wind up doing. So here's something to look at. This is pointed straight at me, and it's right in a straight line. See how these two bolts line up with each other? If I go right down this thing, it's right with that. So if I line up with this, they should line up not even in the neighborhood. That sucks. So I'm going to have to throw this in the uh, strut compressor and get that straightened out. You just you pinch the thing down, you just turn it a little bit. It's not the end of the world, but this is supposed to be quick and easy, right? Can you imagine somebody putting this in there and then just fighting that the whole time? That would suck. Sorry about that. Seriously, this is why I'm a control freak and I don't trust other people to work on my stuff. This is why I usually order normal struts is because I line it up. It's still safer because this is already contained, but you can see I can move this around any old way. I can index it however I want. Um, the bottom of it you have to get in a certain way and the reason why is because there's a dip in the cup and the spring's got to go to that. It's so nice having a freaking strut tamer. So I've got everything lined up in a row. It looks perfect. So the only thing I have left to do is just turn the handle a whole bunch of times and let it just tag in and then double check it before I pull it off. This is how it's supposed to look. You see how these are in alignment? One last time, you see how they're straight with the bottom. So there's three bolts in here. There's one in the front and then the two on the side that we're aligning with the uh, lower part of the strut. So getting the front one in was easiest. And it depends on the angle of the thing, but sometimes there'll be one bolt that hits everything first. That's the one you want to put through. See that one right there? So I'll put one on, it'll hang by that. Put the others on after. There we are with all three. I don't tighten it down till later. But you can see when I went to put it in, had this hanging over the edge. And that way when I go to bring this up to it, I can go right up through the bottom. So from here I put my arm over my knee, and I use my knee as a fulcrum uh, to get this up and in. It makes it, it gives you mechanical advantage. That way even if you're not He-Man, you still get the job done. As for this, you just gotta tip it in and out until it's happy. Again, having the right tools helps so much. That's half of why your mechanic spends it as much as it is. By the time he's done, he's got $10,000 of tools on the floor. You know, and especially if he's going to do it in a quick fashion so that everybody's not piled up and waiting on him. Boy, those struts look good, don't they? Just got to get this to click in. Like I say, if you bend it a little bit, it's that much harder. I think I've got it. We'll know in a minute when I tap this. I think maybe not. Just make sure you don't pinch your hose on something. Something ain't right there. Now I'm wishing that I'd done more wire brushing on this while I had it apart. I think we might have some rust that's in the way of that getting in. That's gotta be it. This is usually the easy part of the job. There we go. Now if your alignment is not on properly, meaning that you're tipped a little bit one way or the other, it can cause your tire to wear more on the inside of the tread or the outside, just depending which way it's leaning. Let me get this in close. You're going to see this little gap on each side here just dissipate to nothing. In fact, let me get you a better angle. Let me give you some VIP access to this. You can see that there's a little bit of a gap here. If I stick a screwdriver in, you can see that I'm going to close up the gap until it's almost pinching, but not quite both. That way there's a little drag and I can play with the alignment a little. So I can still move it. Then I'm going to push in on it. Snug it. 
Do y'all remember our vocabulary lesson on the stabilizer link? So we're going to punch that through. Everything down here looks good. Let's go back up top. Another nice thing about this is the light on it. I just tell you, I love these things. You do got to go back and tighten them by hand. All right, into the cave of darkness. Don't snap them off. But don't have them be too loose either. You can kind of feel when they bind down and they're just done. Feels hard to convey in a manual, that's why we have the torque wrench. So how about the other one? Is it straight? No. So I'm gonna have to throw this in the strut spring compressor as well. If that doesn't look a hundred times better, I don't know what does. See I've got it blacked out between and then the rest is just all niced out. Here's how it used to be rusted, busted, crusted. See here's one that's been painted silver. It's amazing what 10 bucks can do to a cheap hub cap and a wheel. Shake it good, that way it doesn't come out looking clear like that. It's really easy for this stuff to run if you don't go thin enough and slow enough. So go thin and slow. It's really hard to do because it looks so good when you go did I say slow? I mean like build it slow. I really should mask the tire, but it'll wear off the rubber or scratch off really easy anyway. I'm not kidding, these are easy to screw up. I had this one backwards 180. I did this one three times after learning how to do it right on the first one. So a little bit more patience and understanding for people who got it wrong. But seriously, you got to have these right if you're dependent on doing this because you don't want to do any spring compressing, right? So back at my old place, I was always picking up beater cars like this and just going through them. I haven't been doing much of that out here. So the new strut's going to make it ride better and quiet. Uh, just a little bit of rattle can on the hubcaps and the wheels make it look so much better. Let's uh, give it a ride down. And always remember to go back and torque your lug nuts once you get down. That makes a big, big difference. Look at the carnage. Look at the corn flakage. That's pretty bad for around here. It would have been sad putting these rusty, nasty, flaky springs back on there. It's funny as a mark, the index marks for them to line them up. That's the only place it's not that rusty. Should have done that on everything. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. Oh, huh?